Joanne Ratcliffe, and Kirsty Jane Gordon, born in 1962 and 1968 respectively, vanished during an Australian rules football game at Adelaide Oval on August 25, 1973. Their presumed kidnapping and murder have turned into one of the most notorious criminal cases in South Australia. Authorities and the press have often connected their case with the 1966 disappearance of the Beaumont children, suggesting a possible relation. This incident is commonly known as the Adelaide Oval Abductions. Join me for a ride through Strange and Mysterious here at Odd Mysteries Stories. Before I dive into the disappearance, I want to state early on in this video that the over five decade old mystery surrounding the chilling disappearance of these two little girls at a footy game may be one step closer to finally being solved. We should continue to hope. Now let's begin and it's a regular day and two Australian families are about to experience something that would change their lives forever. We're stepping back to a football match, but this isn't just any match. It's between Norwood and North Adelaide, a big day for fans. Now, meet Joanne Ratcliffe. She's not alone. She's there enjoying the game with her parents, Les and Kathleen, her older brother, and a family friend named Frank. Pretty normal day so far, right? But here's where it gets interesting. Sitting right next to Joanne's family are the Gordon. Kirsty Gordon, a little girl is there with her maternal grandmother. Her parents? They're out visiting friends with Kirsty's younger sister. Joanne and Kirsty, though from different families, find themselves seated together, their families joined by friendship and the shared excitement of the game. Given the safe surroundings and familiar faces, the adults see no harm in letting the girls stick together. Now, remember how we all have those family rules? The Ratcliffs had one no wandering off to the toilet during the game's breaks or in the last quarter. But rules can sometimes be bent, right? So when Joanne and Kirsty needed to go, their families let them, not once, but two other times. But here's where the heart of our story deepens. After they left around 3.45 p.m., something went terribly wrong. By 4 p.m., when the girls hadn't returned, the Ratcliffs started searching. Picture the growing panic as time ticked by without any sign of them. In a move of desperation, Kathleen Ratcliffe managed to get an announcement blasted through the Oval's public address system right after the game ended. Imagine that moment, the silence swallowing the stadium as the message echoed, reaching out for Joanne and Kirsty, but no response. The girls were reported missing to the police at 5.12 p.m. After Joanne Ratcliffe, and Kirsty Gordon left their families at the football game, people saw them multiple times over the next 90 minutes. Imagine this, one moment they were seen trying to befriend a stray cat, another time playing with other kids, and later on the situation takes a darker turn. They appeared distressed, and there was an unknown man with them, even seen carrying Gordon at one point. But here's the twist, the people who saw them didn't think much of it. They thought the man was just a parent dealing with his children. The plot thickens when the last sighting of the girls comes into play. They were spotted on a bridge near the Adelaide Zoo. But that's not the end. Another person later said they saw them between the North Adelaide Railway Station and Port Road, the Barton. Despite all these sightings, the girls simply vanished into thin air. Can you imagine the family's panic and the efforts to find them? There was a $5,000 reward. Everyone was talking about it, and yet nothing. The case still turned cold. Years later, in a courtroom in Queensland, Ratcliffe's dad shared some heartbreaking details. He said Joanne knew her way around that oval like the back of her hand, that she wouldn't just wander off, and she knew how to call for help if she needed it. He also mentioned that Joanne and Kirsty hadn't known each other before that day. It was just a chance seating arrangement that brought them together. Fast forward to 40 years later, Joanne's sister, Susie Wilkinson, speaks out. She's frustrated feeling left out in the cold by the police. She questions why some leads were ignored, why certain pieces of evidence were brushed aside. For the family, it's not just a cold case, it's four decades of missing out on life's moments with Joanne. In 2014, there was a new twist, a $1 million reward. That's a lot of money, right? But think about it. No amount of money can bring back the years or fill the gap left by Joanne and Kirsty's absence. 
in a recent twist to the decades-old mystery of Joanne Ratcliffe and Kirsty Jane Gordon, a key witness has finally decided to break his silence. Tony Kilmartin, who was just a youngster selling snacks at the game back in 1973, spoke to Nine News about what he witnessed that fateful day. Kilmartin, now much older, recounted the chilling moment he saw the two girls in distress. He observed one girl being lifted up by a man while the other, in a desperate attempt to protect her friend, was tugging at the man and screaming no and let her go. The chaos unfolded as the game ended, and the crowd's noise peaked with the final siren. What's truly heartbreaking here is Kilmartin's admission of his own inaction. At the time, just a 13-year-old boy, he mistook the scene as a family dispute, thinking the man was the girl's father. He watched as the man and the girls moved toward the exit, not knowing it would be the last time anyone would see them. Let's have a look at some of the suspects in the unsolved disappearance of Joanne Ratcliffe and Kirsty Jane Gordon. The list intersects ominously with another notorious case, the Beaumont children's disappearance. Among those suspected are infamous child killers Bevan Spencer von Einem and Derek Percy. What connects these cases, aside from the tragic fate of the children involved, is the description of the abductor, a middle-aged man, as per eyewitness account. The chilling similarities extend to police sketches. The man last seen with Ratcliffe and Gordon bears a haunting resemblance to the individual last associated with the Beaumont children. This overlapping detail has fueled speculation and investigative paths for years. One significant figure is Arthur Stanley Brown, who passed away in 2002. His features were alarmingly similar to the composite sketches from both cases. A witness who initially encountered this man near the Adelaide Oval as a 14-year-old recognized him decades later on television, a revelation that came 25 years after the fact in December 1998. Susie Wilkinson in 2013 raised concerns about Frank, who was with the families at the football game but seemingly escaped thorough police scrutiny. His intimate knowledge of the girls' routines during such outings and his peculiar actions on the day, disappearing for about 30 minutes before the girls vanished, then staying seated while others frantically searched raises eyebrows. Even Gordon's grandmother noticed Frank's odd detachment during the search efforts. Then there's Stanley Arthur Hart, another shadowy figure who passed away in 1999. Investigations into properties he once owned have not provided the closure desperately needed Known to be a regular at North Adelaide matches and exposed as a child abuser 10 years post-abduction, Hart's connection to the case is eerily coincidental, or perhaps not coincidental at all. On the poignant 50th anniversary of the girl's disappearance, Susie Wilkinson, Ratcliffe's sister, voiced a heart-wrenching conviction when she was heard to say that, quote, in my heart of hearts, I believe it was Hart. Her statement underscores the enduring agony and unresolved mystery surrounding the fate of Joanne Ratcliffe and Kirsty Jane Gordon, a saga intertwined with some of Australia's darkest criminal mysteries. The complexity of the Ratcliffe and Gordon disappearance deepens with the involvement of a person named simply as Frank, a family friend who was present on the tragic day. Another disturbing development in the investigation came to light in 2023, with the focus shifting to Errol George Radan, a convicted pedophile from Queensland. Though Radan passed away in 2022, he had been under official scrutiny as a potential suspect. His criminal activities, predominantly in South Australia, culminated in a 1984 conviction for the indecent assault of a young girl. What's particularly alarming is an alleged victim's claim that Raiden not only resembled the identical sketch of the abductor, but also began abusing her around the time of the Ratcliffe and Gordon abductions. Adding to the grim narrative, after Radon vacated his Broadview residence, discoveries were made that seemed more than coincidental. A scrapbook filled with clippings about Ratcliffe and Gordon and children's clothing hidden in an underground drainage system. These unsettling elements contribute to the ongoing mystery and pain surrounding the case. As I prepare to wrap up the story of this ongoing mystery, we find Susie Wilkinson still grappling with unanswered questions years after her sister Joanne's disappearance. By 2023, her suspicions had crystallized around Stanley Arthur Hart, whom she believed in her heart to be responsible. This conviction emerged despite the murky waters of the investigation, 
where numerous suspects had surfaced over the years, including notorious figures like Bevan Spencer von Einem, Derek Percy, and Arthur Stanley Brown. Errol George Radan, a late suspect tied to other crimes, had also been scrutinized, revealing the complex web entangling this case. With multiple leads and theories, the community and the Ratcliffe family continue to seek clarity and justice. The saga of Joanne Ratcliffe and Kirsty Jane Gordon remains open, a testament to the resilience of those left behind. Susie Wilkinson's unwavering voice serves as a beacon, urging the world not to forget, and maintaining hope that truth will surface, bringing closure to a decades-long mystery. I hope you enjoyed this video and are enjoying the videos on my channel. My name is Vince, and if possible, please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. I'll be posting new videos each Monday and Friday. Clicking the little bell will send you a notification when a new video is posted. In the meantime, I invite you to watch one of my other videos on your screen. Thank you.